important for the live stream. So I have to okay. keep trying until it <laughs> actually goes public. Aha, there we go. Uh... It worked. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to go really quickly. I'm going to go to my YouTube studio and I'm going to delete all those. Okay. okay. This will give people a chance to kind of join too, because now they should have gotten the notification Okay. and everything. So yeah. So I have like right now, I have like three to delete. I understand delete forever, delete forever. I'm going to delete these so people aren't clicking on them and okay now there are two that are saying live but okay and then I'm going to go ahead and see if this one's it. Let me click over to this. There we go. All right. And we have people in the chat already. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and share this. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the confusion. Hang on just a second while we get this all worked out. It's like, what was that? Six times or something I had to try. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put this in the gently led sisters group. All right. This is the correct live stream that you are on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so annoying. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Kaylin said every time she tried to comment, it would pause. <laughs> <laughs> and then Yvonne said she was in the other. And then Ashley said, I kept commenting, commenting on the others, but they shut off. Okay. Sorry guys. Okay. So you're just going to have to get used to that. There might be some really weird flukes. So for some reason, there's this fluke where it's showing up as private for me when I click on it. And then if it's private, no one can type in the live chat. So that's why I have to keep trying over and over until it shows up public. Okay. So we can get into it now. It is shared. Everything is good to go. So thank you, Mel. Do you like being called Melissa or Mel? No, Mel's good. Melissa, Mel. Mel yeah. <laughs> that's how I, I kind of call you both things. So thank you for joining. I have known Melissa for a couple years because, uh, Sashana, I've been teaching her daughter piano. So I've gotten to know her I love Sashana. Now Abigail is teaching Provin and now Melissa also restarted piano lessons. So. Yeah. I'm your, <laughs> maybe I'm your oldest student. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's one older than you. Okay. One. There's one older than you. And it's the same thing. She has a background in piano and she knows to, how to read the notes and everything, but she wants to learn hymns, hymn style. Okay. So so yes, I've really enjoyed getting to know them through our weekly lessons, but, um, we were talking one day, I can't remember about what, but I think maybe you asked if I had done a show about like different hacks and stuff. And I was like, I have, but this is a very popular subject for stay at home moms. Yeah. So I wanted to, I'm like, you want to come on and we could talk about it. And that was a few <laughs> months ago. And then, you know, life just happened, but I'm finally, I have you on here. So go ahead and introduce yourself and just kind of give a little bio about your family and all that. So, okay. So my name is Melissa. I was born in Malaysia. So Malaysia is a country just South of Thailand. And my parents are both Indians. When I was 12, we moved to Australia. So my parents, my brother and I, we moved to Australia. And the same week that we moved to Australia, there was a independent Baptist church just down the street from us. And though we grew up in a Christian family, we didn't go to church. And moving to Australia was a culture shock because everything shut down at five o'clock. And down the road was a gas station, a Shell gas station. My dad said, let's take a walk to the gas station, buy something and come back. And we had to pass the Baptist church to see that. And so we saw the times for the Baptist church. And my dad said, why don't we go to church to meet some people? So we went for the Wednesday service, like the first week that we were in Australia. And then we all got saved within a year and were baptized on the same day. Nice. And so that was when I was 12. So I've been an independent Baptist since then. And in 2015, I, around that time, I really wanted to learn how to go soul winning because there'd been many situations in my life where, you know, you meet people and you're like, oh, I had that chance to give it to them, to give the gospel. And I didn't, you know, I just chickened out and and whatnot. And so I've been listening to Pastor Anderson online. So I came to 
Phoenix for a holiday to learn how to go soul winning. And I met my husband when I was in the church. And okay. at the end of our two week of my two week holiday, he proposed to me. And so then wow. I, came- what? <laughs> I have not heard this story. So this is so interesting to me. For some reason in my head, I thought you met your husband online. I didn't no. realize that at the end of two weeks. Wow. Yeah. You just knew, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he knew. I would say I was a little bit more stressed because um, I guess it's always easier for a guy, right? Like to make a girl come to him. Yes. Yeah, that is true. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but we were um, separated for a year pretty much a year um, because we had to, we waited for the visa paperwork and all that to come through and we got married on the day we met. So one year later was, we got married. Mm -hmm. And so that was seven years now. And we have four kids, um, Sashana, Pravin, Nikolai, and Anjali. And then Sashana's almost going to be six, then four, three, and one. Okay. Very nice. And I think I've seen all of them on screen. (laughs) (laughs) No, we love your kids are so so I have to tell this funny story because I, I clicked with Mel very quickly and I could tell, you know, I see, I do lessons and I can kind of hear parenting styles sometimes <laughs> in the background and all that. And I just picked up that you parent your kids a lot like I do. So mm-hmm. one day, uh, Sashana, she's a little spunky thing, which I love. Cause I love spunky kids. <laughs> I love kids with personality and boy, all your kids have personality. And one day she was just not having it. She was just not wanting to do piano and all this. So I told her, I'm like, okay, I'm going to parent her like I would parent my own kids. So I gave her a little pep talk and I'm like, you are so smart, Sashana. I know you can do this and you just have a bad attitude when you come. And I'm not that honest with a lot of students, but I knew she'd be able to take it. I could just tell. And right. I'm like, you're going to do better next week, you know, and you're going to have a good attitude and I know you can do better. And the next week she came and the la- we've had two lessons since then, and it's been perfect. So it, that little pep talk worked. So, right. No, <laughs> that's know. good. <laughs> yeah. And now but- she's like, she's been taking like song books out and just starting to play nice. by herself. That's, awesome. that's good. Cause I told her, I'm like, you can read the notes. She can read the notes. She's learning and memorizing her notes. I'm like, right. I know you're capable of doing this. You just, you see a daunting challenge and you don't want to do it. And I know you can do this. So, and she stepped up and she's done it, but I love teaching your kids. So yes, that's, that's really cool. So then after, so how long have you been married? Seven years. Okay. So seven years. Nice. So you're still a baby newlywed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> so you had to adapt. And I didn't realize that you moved to Australia either. Cause mm-hmm. my brother-in-law is from Australia and he had to become American citizen and all that. And I know that was just something you just accomplished yes. you know, here in the last couple months. So he had to go through all that and it's a big adjustment. And I think he moved over here when he was in his teens, I think, but it's a big adjustment when you move from there to hear right and I think maybe and there's a few more ladies now in our church that's kind of gone through the same thing but when you move and you get married I think that makes it even more difficult because when you're working a job and then you're like driving around maybe going to the shops with your friends or going to the restaurants with your, you start getting an idea of where everything is what's cheap what's mm-hmm. not good that kind of stuff but here it's like I got married and I was in the house right away and yeah. <laughs> it's a big culture it was like cultural and big life change right Definitely. Now, how old were you when you got married? I got married at 31. Okay. So you were in your early older, 30s. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So you'll always be like the older mom with like the younger kids. Right. <laughs> so it's like this odd, like, I don't know where I fit in sometimes because the ladies that have kids my age are like 23, 24. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but our kids are the same age. But the moms that have like my age have like teenagers and they're yeah. like other things together. So. Well, see, I have adults and teenagers and babies. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have the whole, and we're about the same age where I think you're a little bit younger than me. So I have the whole spectrum. So I totally understand how that is, but I don't know. I feel like I have more patience now being a mom to young ones than I did in my twenties. I don't yes. know if that's just a process of motherhood or it's just maturing. I don't know. So but let's talk about your early years. So when you were first married and when I was first married, it was a bare bones budget. Yeah, it was <laughs> um, like for us, like when, like I said, cause we got married a little bit older and my husband, he got saved a little bit later in, in life. So I think it only been like a few years when we'd got married. And so he changed his career. So wow. 
when we were engaged, he dropped, he was working as a butcher in Kroger or Fry's. Okay, yeah. And, um, but there was nowhere to go. Like it was capped out. Kind of right. And so now that he saw himself getting married, he was like, well, I need to like think about how I'm going to provide and whatnot. And so he decided to become an electrician, but now he's in his thirties okay. and yeah. he's starting down at apprentice level. Yeah. That is tough. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> what Jason's doing. So he's literally making a minimum wage right now. Yes. As an he apprentice. was too. And, Ooh. and he was doing night school too. So yeah. he was like not home much at all. And when he was, he was studying. And yeah, so we didn't have much of a budget at all. Mm-hmm. The blessing was at that time we were staying with my mother-in-law because she was a widow at that time. And so we were staying with her. And so we had like rent that was, we were not paying rent, but we were paying bills. Mm-hmm. But still on that pay, uh... it was so I was learning like how to stop grocery shopping. Cause even I lived with my parents until I got married. Mm-hmm. And though we were immigrants and I went through all of that with my parents, like living like very cheaply, I'd already started working a full-time job, living the life you could say, like, you know, just buy whatever you felt like buying, right, you're right. Only really taking care of yourself. So, but yeah, so that was a huge learning curve, I would say, like being a new wife, having that low salary. And then, yeah, then you start learning from like ladies at church. I started going to food banks a lot and then like mm-hmm. um, getting groceries from there. And we only had one car. So I had to like manage that too and go to the food bank, come back, go to the grocery shopping to fill in the gaps of what I didn't get from the food bank and then go to Wednesday night service because that was the only day I had the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. When um we first got married, I also only had one car. So a lot of times I would take my husband to work early in the morning if I needed the car for groceries or whatever. But I have to say that you guys living the one, I would not move to a few state. Texas is one. Arizona is another <laughs> <laughs> because of the scorpions and the black widows and the heat. No, thank you. Yes. But the nice thing about your area is you are, you have so many readily accessible food pantry things. You know, and I know like even your church, you, Ms. Anderson, Jajan is always telling me about all of this free food. Like you guys get from like really nice places, like Trader Trader Joe's, Joe's, (laughs) yes, like really good places. And then it's free for the church, you know? So that was a very good option. I can't say around here, I live in rural country. So food pantries are a little more rare. Um, And then too, we don't have a lot of the bigger stores like Trader Joe's and different places like that. Um, they're like an hour away, you know, you've got everything right there. So did you ever, um, did you ever do couponing when you were younger? Okay. No, because couponing is not like something that I've only really watched, heard about it on TV. It's not something that happens in Australia. Like you just watch, like, you know, you get the supermarket flyers and you see like, oh, this is unspecial, that kind of stuff. So you watch for that. But couponing, no. And even like when I moved to the church, like ladies, I don't know any ladies that really did that. I mean, a lot of people did like thrifting, like going to Goodwill and all that stuff, right. but not couponing. I don't know whether it's too popular. I don't know how big it is. They had those shows like extreme couponing. Now I did this. I got into this for a while. I would spend all day. This is back in Sunday afternoon when we come home and we had a break and we lay the kids down for a nap. And I would spend the whole afternoon clipping coupons and I would do, I would play the CVS game. So, okay. um, and they had extra care bucks. So basically if you had a coupon and this might still be the case, I'm not sure, but if you had a buy one, get one free coupon, and CVS was running buy one, get one free sale. You would get both of them free. Okay. So the coupon would cover their part of buy one, get one free. And CVS would cover the buy one, get one free too. Paul Wittenberger said, hi, Mel. <laughs> or, hey, Mel. <laughs> hi, Paul. <laughs> so you would get a lot of, um, I would come out and then you would get, you would only buy stuff where, that you got the extra care bucks back on. So okay. I would come out having a hundred dollars worth of stuff. And this was all my, uh, cosmetics, my toiletries, toilet paper, a lot of cereals. They would run deals on cereals. I would yes. come out. I got really, really good at it. And I would spend, um, 50 cents and I would have like a hundred dollars worth of stuff. Plus okay. I would get back like 30 or $40 to spend the next time. Okay. So you keep rolling that over. It's really worth it. But as far as couponing for regular food, Aldi was better. Aldi was yes. a better bet than couponing because a lot of it's junk. 
if you're on any type of diet, a lot of it's just for cereals, pop tarts, chips, you know, yes, different things like that. So, um, I've just found it better to, like you said, look at the shop, the supermarket things and do like County market. If they're running a lot of sales on a certain item or, you know, go to Walmart for this, that's cheaper because there are, there is some Walmart things that are cheaper than Aldi things. Yeah. So I think part of helping your husband out and saving money from home is just being aware of all the different sales. Right. And there's, I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, obviously most of the things I'm going to mention is from here, but there's a big supermarket here called American discount foods. Mm, And there's like one. Okay. So, and there's like two in the um, County and that's one that just has random things. Like it's not like a proper supermarket, but they kind of get like discount stuff from everywhere, but they run a flyer every Wednesday. Mm. And I mean, now like our, like our eating habits have changed where we try to eat like more, you know, grass fed, organic and that. And so they always have like grass fed beef in like bulk. You have to buy like 10 pounds or 20 pound, like things of it, but it's cheaper than buying like bad beef in the supermarket. So then you have to look out for those alerts and stuff just to like say, okay, well, I'm going to drive there. It takes like half an hour to drive there, but then you have beef for like maybe half the year, depending on how much you eat, you know? Right. Exactly. And we'll talk a little bit later too about, you know, maybe going in with someone to buy half a cow or a fourth oh, of a yes. cow, you yeah. know, cause that really in the long run, that really saves you. We actually have a butcher that comes to church here too. And, okay. um, he's able to, a lot of times I've bought a fourth of a cow a couple of times through okay. the place that he works at. So that is something I need to do this fall. But what were some ways that you helped out that you figured out how to help your husband when he was in that bare bones? you know, stage of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I having not, not having a car, I think helped because yeah. if you go out, you want to spend money. Yeah. And like I said, for like the first couple of years of marriage, like I can't even think like how many times I'd get like a boba or a Starbucks or something. I'd be oh, like, yes. <laughs> it'd be just like birthdays or just for like an anniversary. But same here, same exact here. It was like such a treat. Yes. Like a few times a year. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> right. Exactly. And then I would feel guilty. So I was like, I'm yes. drinking like six bowl. It was probably yes. five bucks back then. Now yeah, it's like, I think it was like five bucks back then. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'd get a gift card, like in baby showers and stuff, but ultimately just sticking to like the grocery grocery list. And then like when the food bank, sometimes they have some treats in there and we just eat like the treats. Like my husband, because we would take whatever we didn't want to church. Right. But he'd be like, hey, this is good. Like, I want this. I want the brownies, whatnot. So we'd get our treats from there. And I, you know, pack him his lunchbox. You know, he wouldn't get food off the food truck. Always made sure, like, and even sometimes spending, like, that little bit on, like, a snack because he wants, like, chips or he wants chocolate. It's, you're better off spending, like, 10 bucks at Costco to get a big bag of chips to put it in his lunchbox instead of saying, like, oh, I don't even want to spend. We don't need chips, you know, like, that kind of thing. Right. But then he's going to buy like the same chips mm-hmm. off the food truck for like two bucks. And then exactly. before you know it, you could have bought like 10 bags of chips. So like kind of thinking smartly, like penny wise, pound foolish, right? Like you need the little things to keep you happy. If he needs like those little things to keep him happy, then mm-hmm. I have my little things that keep me happy too, right? With treats and whatnot. And yeah, just cooking all at home um, and um not really snacking as well, I would say probably help, but yeah, I think not going out helped a lot. I would say. Yes, it did. And going to the I'm, library. Right. Yes. Library. Take advantage of your library for sure. Yeah. You know, and different things. I'm thinking back to the bare bones, you know, we really are a lot better off <laughs> now that our kids are older, you know, you become, you learn better skills and you get more established. And while we live on the lower income, as far as my husband's salary goes being uh, in the ministry. A lot of, you know, we're, we're taking care of our needs are met. We're up to $350 a week now in groceries. So yeah. I look back at the 35, when we did a budget, mm-hmm. I had $35 a week to spend for a family of five. That was yeah. three kids. They were little. So, yeah. so I did, oh man, we didn't eat out barely ever. So we would budget in if we ate out. And sometimes we would do, we finally had to start budgeting in. we would eat out on Sunday with the church people. Mm-hmm. So we started budgeting that in like $20 every week, you know, for yeah. that. But then, um, if I wanted something fancy, let's say I wanted, I don't know, olive garden soup or something. I would just figure out how to do a copycat you yeah. know, recipe 
Or if I wanted a lot of times, one of my go-to snacks is I would make a big batch of chocolate chip cookies. And then I'd put ice cream between them and freeze them. And then it was like a good ice cream sandwich to eat. You know, I'm thinking of rice and beans. We had once a week, rice and beans is super. And this is when we were trying to pay off all our debt. So we had accumulated, um, about five to $10,000 in debt between our car loan and our credit card debt. And we really wanted to pay that off. Cause at the time we only made 35,000 a year. Now I'm like, how did we live off of that? I don't know, <laughs> but it helps the area we live in. It, it helps we're rural country. It's a lot more affordable. You could not get by on 35,000 where you live. No, I mean, it's <laughs> rent alone. And Unless you're, you're living in one of those like multi-family setups. So like five families yes. in one house. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And this was, of course, you know, 15 years ago when we were doing all this. So inflation, it's completely gone through the roof now. Um, But everything was from scratch. And like you said, I baked, cooked. I mean, it was, I did coupons for the snacky things, you know, the chips and the yogurts. That's another thing. Coupons are good for yogurts. Um, I played the sales at Kroger. They would have like buy five, get one free or buy three, get one free, different things like that. So I came home with this huge table of food one time and I had only spent $35, Okay, you know, on this huge table of food. So there are things that you can do. Um, I think the only thing I probably didn't do was I did not take advantage of food banks. I am to the point I go to food banks now (laughs) and I'm just over the stigma or whatever. We're not on government help for (laughs) any of that. So right. I'm like, we're not taking any government help. And I have a large family. I'm already spending $350 a week on food. If I can find a food bank in a church, I'm going to take advantage of it, mm-hmm. you know, so because of my family size. So I think if people could get past a stigma of yeah. like, you know, only low income, like poor people being going to the food bank, I think it would be a lot better. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And I was doing it until I think I had three kids, but it mm-hmm. just became hard to deal with little ones and doing the food bank. And I was like, I have to let it go because you'd have to wait sometimes like an hour to like get through it all. And I was just like, okay, I, this season, I'm just not going to be able to do this. But yeah, Yeah. when I was getting like food from the food bank, I would get the food and then I plan my menu around it. So I know like, okay, I got cauliflower, I got broccoli, I got beans, I got whatever it might be. And then that's my menu, like for the week until the next food. And they give you so much fruit. You pretty much never had to buy fruit. I know that is, that is what I like the most about about that is the fresh, the fresh fruit and stuff that you get. And sometimes the one that I go to, it's, it's out of my old church. I go once a month and they have uh, meat, a lot of meat that they'll give away like turkeys and, you know, lunch meat and different things like that. So I think once you get past the stigma of that, um, but yeah, I think as a wife too, I think of the verses in Proverbs where it talks about the heart of her heart, the heart of her husband to safely trust in her. And I really feel like to me, that is like a money thing, you know, like your husband trusts us not to be out there running up the credit card and out there making frivolous purchases and, you know, different things like that. And so I take that very seriously. And I do know that since he is the main breadwinner, I need to be conscious of being careful with that money as well. You know, so I've always kept that in the back of my back of my head, but let's talk about practical ways to save money. So in this section, I know we wanted to go over a bunch and this is one of my, (laughs) my favorite days of the year is my birthday because of all the freebies (laughs) I get. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I remember that first like birthday I had, and like I said, we never had any treats. Mm -hmm. It was just exciting. (laughs) Yes, it is. Yeah. And then like, so late, oh, sorry, you were saying, no, no, I was going to ask you. So what, what is your first tip for women when it comes to getting those freebies? Like, what do they oh, have to do? Okay. So I would say like, now that I've learned, I've tweaked it over the years is just like, anytime you see a chain restaurant, when you're in the car and your husband's driving, just like subscribe to all their loyalty programs. So you go like, yep. okay, this Texas roadhouse subscribe to their loyalty because mm-hmm. all of them ask you for their birthday, for yep. your birthday, sorry. And, um, and then if you're going to go eat somewhere, you didn't know, just check while you're waiting for your food, check whether there's a loyalty program with that. And that's how I kind of got like more into it. Like there were ladies at church that would say like, oh, don't forget to go to like this barbecue place. You can get barbecue from there or like to Denny's where you can get like a full breakfast. 
And then I started like looking more into it and Googling. I mean, I had nothing to do. I, I hadn't even had a child yet. I was at home all the time. So I was like, why not like subscribe to all this stuff? So that's how like we got into it. And then we spent the whole day on our birthday, like just driving, getting breakfast mm-hmm. from here, sharing it together in the car. Well, sometimes we'll just bring it all back home and share it. Like we even shared it with my mother-in-law and then we would have dinner like with all these different meals. Um, yeah, and so we made a whole day out of it. Now with the kids, it's a bit harder. And the way I've kind of tweaked, it might sound like a lot of work for some people, but for me, I think it's easy. So now, as soon as I get the email, I check the expiration date and I put the expiration date in my calendar. <laughs> nice and so that way if I'm out and about and then I see like hey there's Wetzel pretzel I can get a free like Wetzel pretzel from there let me just go and check so then I do it like that I don't really go out of my way to get many except like Starbucks and Dutch Bros yes is that they're like the hot ones to get anything free from (laughs) oh yeah they are yep I always get my free Starbucks and I always get my free Panera oh yes Panera is hard to get free stuff yeah. Um, what were some of the other ones I did? No, but it's so fun. You have it like down to a science. That's hilarious. <laughs> you put it in your calendar. That's a good idea though. Cause they do all have different expiration dates, right? Some of them even give you like a whole year to get it till your next birthday. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't live like where, like all these places are like nearby. So like the other day I was at Walmart and opposite Walmart was black bear diner. I don't know whether mm-hmm. you have that. Yes, you do. I ate it. No, we don't have it, but I ate it at it for the first time in Arizona. Okay. And they do a free breakfast. So oh. I remember I was pulling in and I was like, oh, they have a, and then you just order it through the app. And then I just wow. kept, so I picked it up on the way home. <laughs> nice. So, they, a whole free breakfast for your birthday. Yeah. Wow. So they did the pancakes, bacon, um, scrambled eggs. I think it was. So it's pretty, I have, okay. So I have those pictures that I wanted to share. Yes. Let me just see whether I can. Okay. So of course let me see. it should work. Mm-hmm. Is it sharing? No, I'm wondering if, let me see, see. advanced sharing. Oh, yep. There we go. Okay. So a few pictures with the kids there. (laughs) Is it opening? Yep. Okay. You're on the (laughs) the pictures. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So this was, we were just out in the mall, like going to Marshall's. And so we grabbed uh, Annie's pretzel while we were there, while we were there. And like some of these things are really pricey nowadays because I don't really buy these kind of snacks when I'm out, but that's like six bucks or seven bucks, I think for one giant pretzel. So for me, yeah. as I'm like checking it out through like curbside pickup or like through the app, I'm like, yes, winner. Can you click on it to make it bigger? It's just showing oh. a little check mark on her. Does that make it any bigger? No, no. You can see the little ones. You can see all of them lined up. Oh, okay. It says that I'm sharing. We can see the, it's like the little blue check mark is on the one with Sashana and Auntie Anne. No. No, we can see all the pictures though. And you have them labeled. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, and then the next one was your Black Bear Diner. Right. So that's a Black Bear Diner breakfast. And then this one was the barbecue place that, um, most ladies love going to. So it was some of them you have to pay maybe a dollar or two to like, um, they like this one, I think gives you $12 off a barbecue dinner. Wow. So I think this came to like $13. I think it was, so you get cornbread, brisket, pulled pork, coleslaw. So Paul enjoyed that for dinner. That looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and cheesecake factory too. Right. So cheesecake, fa- uh, so this is Buffalo wings. Um, they do like six wings that you can get for your birthday. Nice. And so even that was, I didn't even think about that. I was in the strip mall where they were and I was like oh wow I have like six wings from them let me put it through the app and get that um while I wait try double clicking on the pictures okay now it's, st- it's still like on the one with uh Sashana that says oh Andrew yeah has. you see it I feel like the sharing is making the computer um <laughs> be all weird yeah it yeah. might be uh-huh. let me try again okay now I see your arrow Okay. You just clicked on black bear diner. Did that become big? No. Oh, hmm. they're not becoming big, but we're getting, we're still seeing the little pictures. Okay. So. So let me, oh, okay. That, that might work. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. 
Okay. I'll still see the little ones. So then okay. you have Cheesecake Factory yes. here. Is that a whole piece of cheesecake? Uh, yes, yeah, so you get a whole slice of cheesecake for your birthday. Nice. So that one too, I ordered like curbside pickup because I was in the area. And so we got the Oreo Cheesecake Dream, I think it is. Well, Oreo Extreme. Wow. And what else do we have? So this crumble is Gia cookie. Cr- yes, crumble cookie. I, we, I think on there's, <laughs> I've never eaten one. I've never eaten one, but I think there's, there might be some in, in some of the towns, the bigger towns near us. Okay. So we got the pumpkin pie cookie, oh. I think it was. Nice. It was good, but I'm happy we just had one because it was very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're uh, now just a warning. You're probably going to gain 10 pounds after this birthday week. But... <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I share with the family. So that helps out. <laughs> okay. So this was Dutch Bros and um, Starbucks, Starbucks from uh-huh. the extra birthday. And this is Habit Burger. Never heard of that. So Happy Burger is a chain here and you can get a char grilled burger. So just a standard cheeseburger that you can get from them too. So I picked that one up from them. So you can definitely enjoy your birthday and not have to buy any food. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> like yeah. every meal of the day. Basically. Yes, you got breakfast, you got your brisket lunch, you got mm-hmm. just lots of dessert. <laughs> yep. Um, and then matcha too. Oh, I love matcha. So there's this matcha ice cream place and you can get um, like a whole soft serve um for your birthday I probably wow. paid a couple bucks more to add like the mochi things on it for the kids right but that was more than enough for all the kids to like enjoy and not be like okay I don't want any more right nice so that and then there's a smoothie place called Robex and you can get a smoothie for your birthday so we got like a carrot pineapple smoothie I think it was and then on another day we got some wetzel pretzel so kind of spread it out so you can eat like and have a treat for like a month. So this is not me like enjoying everything on one day. It's right. just going, I mean, ultimately I'm just trying to look at like, you're just going about your everyday life and then you want a treat and like, here's a free treat. You know, you're not going out of your way to get it. Right. Very nice. No, I'm so now that I know I'm like going to go get all the apps and sign up for the loyalty <laughs> for like <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, Cheesecake Factory, Dutch yeah. Bros. I don't think we have any Dutch Bros around us, but yeah, I'm totally signing up for everything. Oh yeah. And then Jenny said Krispy Kreme gives you free dozen donuts on your birthday. Oh, a dozen? What? The one here, the one here only gave, like gave us three. And I, there was, I never came across one where like I was driving around. So I was like, I'm not going right. to drive for three donuts. <laughs> right. But yeah, maybe it depends on where you're at. You know, yes. what, what part of the country you're in. Right. Another thing I've noticed too, is that if you are frequent, like, um, you go frequently to certain places, they give you better birthday deals too. Cause yes. there was a season that I was going to Chick-fil-A a little bit more and they gave me 30 nuggets on my birthday. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, score. Then yes. I didn't get it this year. So I was like, okay, it must be because I like pretty much never oh, went. Oh <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. And I feel like even with Panera, it kind of goes off that too. Dunkin' Donuts as well. I think the ones that I get, I always get the Dunkin' Donuts, the Starbucks, Starbucks, you have to use like the day of, or the week of it's very, yes, it's very specific. So I always make sure I get Starbucks Panera, I think is, is your birthday or the week of, um, but then, like you said, there are other ones. I think I've gotten ones before trying to think of all the ones that I try to use. Some of them are not very good, but then some of them are like, um, I think Culver's, you might get a free scoop of ice cream or something. Yeah, you do on your birthday. So yeah, definitely sign up for all those. At least you'll have a really fun birthday day and birthday week. (laughs) There's another place here that's kind of popular. It's called YC's grill or some other places have like Genghis grill where Mm -hmm. you choose like your ingredients from a buffet and then they stir fry it for you. Oh, and you can get a whole meal on your birthday for that, but you have to dine in. And so it's not something like I can go with my kids or like right. get a curbside. So when we were first married, then we went in and like got those on our birthdays. Because then you can kind of like sit there for a couple of seconds and just like take it away and like go home. Right. But that like those are really good. And that's like another full meal too. It is. Yeah. And then Jenny said Waffle House has freebie coupons. You can print off and get a free waffle on your birthday. Okay. Denny's free grand yes, slam Denny's. on your birthday. You have to show yeah. ID. So yeah. Ooh, I'm signing up for a lot of stuff after this. <laughs> just, <laughs> and just also if you're going to go eat at these places, I mean, like I said, like we hardly went out to eat, but if you know, okay, tomorrow's our anniversary. We're going to Texas Roadhouse for our like anniversary, sign up the day before and you can get a free appetizer so that when you yes. get there, 
you can get those kind of things. Because usually if you sign up when you're there, they don't want to give it to you because most people, I think, sign up when they're in the restaurant. Yes. So if you sign up like a couple of days before, then you can get desserts or appetizers usually. I'm so mad. Now that you say that, it triggers my memory. When we had gone there with our friends from Ireland, I signed up. And they mm-hmm. said, okay, now you have a free app appetizer well my husband and I just went there like last week and I did I totally forgot about it oh we could have had a free appetizer (laughs) ah so mad so mad at myself I gotta remember that for next time so yeah Melissa said awesome my birthday is this month start signing up (laughs) yeah yeah this is the best time to start signing up (laughs) yes now you also did or have done mystery shopping I have I remember this got big when I was a younger mom I was hearing mm-hmm. stuff about it and I never, I just didn't have the ability at that time, having three little kids and, you know, I, we only had one car for a long time until we got our minivan. Um, I just didn't have the ability to do it, but go into what mystery shopping is exactly. Okay. So it was a lady at church that told me about this, like probably soon after I got married, but it's one of those things sometimes people tell you and you're like, oh, that sounds a bit too much. I, I don't really care to like mm-hmm. learn about it. But then because she had brought it up a couple more times and I still had the app on my phone and I realized like, okay, maybe it's not so bad. And we hardly went out to eat. Like I said, and my husband loved, loves pizza. And I'd be like, I really don't care for pizza. Yeah. So then when we're going out to spend money for pizza, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to spend money to like eat pizza. But they had like the place he likes the best, which is Barrow's Pizza. Hmm. And so that's like a popular chain here. It's supposed to be like Chicago style pizza, I think. But um, yeah. so what you do pretty much is, is like you sign up on the app, it comes up. I can, hopefully it, it works. Like um, I'll try to share it. And because it's not pictures, hopefully it will work. Um, let's see whether that comes up. Is that coming up? I think there's a little bit of a lag. It takes a second. Okay. So it should maybe last time it took a little bit of time. Okay. Cause I just wanted to pull up some of the websites, um, to show about it. Yeah, it should be able to. There okay. Okay. So this is the one that I first started with. It's called I secret shop. Okay. And mm-hmm. so what you do is like you, you can make it a habit to like go in and look. Sometimes you get emails um, to alert you, but ultimately it's you going in and looking. So depending, I've been through seasons where I like don't do it at all or seasons where I want to do it like every week. And so then I just go in in the morning, like after I've done like my Bible time, that kind of stuff. And you check through your phone. So I go in and I see what they have. And then I sign up if it's something that I want to do. So then they usually give you a window that you can do it in. So let's just say October to October 10th and then you can choose whatever day you want and then they'll tell you to an extent what they want you to order but not in specific so let's just say with the pizza place so let's just say like right down here I have Barrow's Pizza for the 9th of October okay and they will just tell you you have to order a large pizza and two drinks so then you can order whatever pizza you want and whatever drinks you want but you have to Um, it's a learning curve in the sense, like when you do your first one, then after that, it's really quick for you to do it. So you have to time everything. You have to time how long it takes for your order to be taken, how long it takes for your food to come out. And sometimes it'd even be like, maybe if you're calling in, like how long it takes for, you know, the phone call to be answered. So you just read like the briefing of it and then you take pictures. So you take pictures of your untouched food and your untouched drink. And then you just fill out like all the questions in your app. So this is an app actually. And if I, let me see if I go into view and complete shop, whether it has like anything in there. So, this so like, so let's just cool. say, I want to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say you have like view question and overview. So let's say like, okay, purchase requirements, two beverages and one large, <clears throat> one large pizza or 24 wings. Okay. And then. It will tell you photo requirements, take a photo of your pizza and pay close attention to like the people around you. Sometimes they'll ask you to like visit the bathroom and make sure the bathroom's clean. Right. And um, and that's it. And then they usually pay you within a month. So oh. if, if you did the shop like very close to their payday, then you get the money really quickly. Or okay. sometimes you have to wait a month for it. And then yes, you take a picture of your receipt. So we've pretty much never paid for pizza since I started doing it. So I think it's been like, 
four years since I started doing it. And all our pizzas that we've eaten, unless we've been out somewhere else, has all been through iSecret Shop. Oh, and that's now really that cool. <laughs> right. And then now that I've learned how to do it, even after the first one, I just answer all the questions while I'm waiting for my pizza. Right. Or I answer it on the drive home. Like if my husband's with me and he's driving, then I just answer it while he's driving. And then it's submitted before I even get home. So for me, I'm thinking like, well, it's time that I would have just spent maybe doing something else on my phone, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're right. always on our phone when we're in the car. So <laughs> exactly. So like when we moved, like we moved recently, like in three months, like the first of July, we moved to this house that we're in now. I set up like three or four secret shops because I knew like I want to get out of the house on some days and I don't want to spend money for food. So then I did like pizza one day. I did tacos another day. And then I did euros like nice kind of kebab yeah. things. And there was something else, but now I can't remember. <laughs> And so if I go back um, to the other page and let's just see whether I can go back. So a couple of the places, see, I, I added a couple more this time just to like show um, what options there are. Mm -hmm. But usually I would do like maybe a couple a month, you know, like sometimes I, my husband wants pizza, so we book it. <laughs> right. Sometimes, oh, I want the eggs to see. That would be good. Yeah, like so that's like, like a, that. I've never seen that one before, so I'm like, I'm taking, so you can have like a nice breakfast, so you name it like French toast, eggs benedict, whatever, and they just require you to order two entrees nice. for that one, and um, sometimes I've done it because um, I'm, I just don't want to cook, Yeah. <laughs> so then I don't want to spend money, <laughs> Right. but yeah, so this little season, there was another day I remember like, I did like a meal train for a lady at church. And so I dropped food for her. And I was like, well, I don't really have time right now to also cook for us if I'm going to do both. So then I brought, like picked up a pizza through one of the secret shopping because they let you do something like that where you just pick it up. You don't have to like dine in and whatnot. So yeah, so right now, like I've got that breakfast one book. I've got this pizza one book and then I've got a smoothie. So that's like a coffee and oh, nice. smoothie place. Yeah. And, but it's in a really nice place. Like it's called Tempe Town Lake. So I was thinking like, well, I could just go out. The weather's starting to get good. Get a coffee for me, get a smoothie for the kids. And then we can just take a walk. So what a good so idea. Then. I'm totally looking into this now and doing this. Yes. And I think it's best, like the best options are either for like newlyweds, like couples with no children right. or couples with children that they can, um, have somebody babysit the kids. Right. Because yes. there have been many nice restaurants that have come up where it's like a $150 budget in a nice restaurant, but it says no children allowed. Right. Or there have been, what else have they been? There have been like hotel stays where you can do like hotels, no what? kids allowed. That's so and cool. So you can do like staycations. If, you, if you're traveling somewhere, you can change your city and then you can see like what they have there too, because it's like a national company. Um, there have been what else like bowling there have been donuts mm. um, like ones that I haven't done there's also been one of those like you know indoor skydiving like yes sky my zone. husband would love that yeah yeah and they had one of those and you could do two adults for that so I was like wow Paul and I could go but we can't because we have yes. nobody to watch the kids and they're expensive I think they were with that one as well they weren't going to let you like pay for it yourself because it was pricey so they were going to send gift cards too because I think it was like $200 per person Wow, so that, that would be way, so cool. <laughs> so that way you're not putting it on your own credit card, right? So right. No, this so, is a good idea. So what is this called again? This is called I Secret Shop. Okay. So, I Secret Shop. So yeah, depending on your city, it's gonna have different options. And so this was the first one that I started doing. And then when I saw when I started getting into it a bit more, then I started watching YouTube videos to just see like whether there's other companies um that do other places. And so another one that I've started doing, I think, um, here is called RBG, like reality based group. And okay. they do text, they do Texas Ooh, Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse. That would be <laughs> what I would want. Yep. So and they come out like every month, every single Texas Roadhouse. Like one of the restrictions that they have is that you can only do the same like Texas Roadhouse or same bar with pizza once a month. So you can't keep okay. going back to the same one. But because we have quite a few around us, then I just change like locations um, for which one I'm going to do. So like, for instance, this like top one is the one that's like closest to us. Mm -hmm. And my mom's actually coming to visit in from Australia in about 10 days. 
Okay. And so I booked it for a Friday for Paul and I so that we can actually go on a date night. Nice. <laughs> So yeah, so that's just ways like then we can go. I mean, chances are if I'm going with Paul, we're going to spend above the budget, but at least we're still getting like a really cheap dinner and a dinner that we both can enjoy, you know? Right. That is really cool. Yeah. We'll have to try to, um, you'll have to try to put all of the links together and then we'll put put them in the comments. Okay. So everyone can find them. Okay. And one last one I'll just go through really quickly is another company called A Closer Look. And a closer look has like really like famous chains, but it gets like snagged up really quickly. Like they have all the Hawkins like cinema and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can go watch a movie and like have it paid. And then it has like a few like ice cream places and even um, chain Italian restaurants, like really good Italian restaurants in Phoenix. So you can go do that. And they give you good budgets, like $80 for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can for sure like get everything you want and then come off like, not spending a buck because then they usually require you to tip so that you look like a good customer right but even <laughs> but even with the tip it comes within the budget mm-hmm. yeah so and it helps that we don't drink any alcohol so then you're not like wasting money like on that right. you buy food. <laughs> yeah you can put all that up towards their food this is so cool because um I I'm now I'm thinking back there's probably, and this is why waiters and waitresses have to be careful. And the restaurant has to be careful. There's probably secret shoppers everywhere that, (laughs) you know, they don't know about. So they have to provide a good experience at all these places. I I probably thought that secret shoppers would be like people in the industry, like people who write for food blogs and stuff. But this is just like everyday people just coming in with their kids and whatnot. So yeah, it's been, oh, cool. we pretty much like never spend any money eating out except for Asian food. <laughs> <laughs> there's no Asian food on the list, huh? No, there's no Asian food on the list. <laughs> Probably because there, a lot of Asian restaurants are just, um, local owners. Right. You know, there's not too many big chains unless you included like, um, Panda Express. Yes. Panda Express. Yeah. Right. So, so, so yeah, that's, so then it helps me put my food fund like into that. So if I have like, you know, let's say a hundred bucks for the month for eating out, it's more than likely going to go for like ramen or whatnot for what I like to eat when I want to go out, you know? Mm-hmm. No, that's awesome. Okay. So yeah, we will link to all of those in the, the um, comments. So then after mystery shopping, you've got credit card hacks that you okay. use as well, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, my, I feel like I'm going to go on for a long time. That's okay. okay. And then Karen just said, hi, Mel. I miss you. <laughs> hi. I don't know which Karen, Karen Rodriguez. Yes, Karen. Okay. Oh, no, Karen, hi, Rodriguez. Karen. <laughs> I think she was probably, if I'm not mistaken, she's probably one of the ladies that started all this trend. Oh, I'm sure she was. Faithful. So I probably didn't hear it from her, but I probably heard it from the students. <laughs> oh, yes, probably. I'm sure she had a hand in it for sure. This seems very Karen-ish. <laughs> okay so with the credit card stuff I know we're talking before about how like not to like rack up the credit card bill and whatnot so I know financial expert and I like had to learn like the American credit score history system and whatnot Mm -hmm. right but we pretty much never like paid any interest on credit cards we're just playing we're trying to just use the bank for what they use people for yes use it for the rewards and then pay it right. off when you, exactly you mm-hmm. and I mean I can't say that I've never paid interest but there was a small season where we were flipping a house so we said we will go and put stuff on the credit card just to flip the house to pay it off right but my husband and I we have really good credit scores and from what I've learned like credit um history is from you making sure you pay like your credit cards on time having a um, long credit history and a good average history. So not just like one really old credit card and one new credit card, but like credit cards in between. Right. And um, how much you use of your credit card. So then if you have like a $2,000 credit limit and you're always at like Mm 1,999, so that doesn't help your credit score. (laughs) Right. So that's what I've learned. But what happened was that at that season, while we were flipping houses, we didn't have money in the bank to like, always buy raw products, but there would be like really good sales. Oh, sometimes you have like liquidation shops that you would could buy like flooring for really cheap and it would be like Home Depot stuff. And so my husband like would want to spend that. And he'd be like, Mel, like this price is worth it. We're losing on a good deal. And I don't know whether y'all get it, but we often get like credit card, like 
things in the mail. Like you're pre-approved for this credit card and that. Yeah. So I would just throw that stuff in the bin and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to throw it. So I told him, how about like I open one of these ones and I apply for it and see like what happens. And that's when it kind of started. It's when I'll be like, okay, we can get a credit card with zero interest for 15 months. And they also have an introductory offer where if you spend like $2,000 in like three months, you get $500 off. Right. I mean, I'm making some of this stuff up, but that's the kind of stuff they do. Right. right? Exactly. So I said, okay, let's do it. And then we'll get an extra discount. Your flooring is going to cost like 2000 bucks. So we're going to get this. And even if we just pay the bare minimum, we have until tax season and then we can pay it off with our taxes and then like cut that debt out. Right. So that's when it kind of started. And so, but now what I do is every time I have a big bill coming up, I go on the internet and I start looking for cards that have a good introductory offer. So if I have like a midwife bill and I have to pay $4,000, I try to see like what cards are out there because every year they come out with new credit cards, like every bank, like US bank, Chase bank, whatever. And then they tell you like, okay, you spend $2,000, you get $200 off. um, And I usually go for the cash option because a lot of ones go for like frequent flyer miles and whatnot. But we don't fly that much (laughs) at all, pretty much. (laughs) So those, sometimes you can convert those for, um, what do you call this, for gift cards, I think, and whatnot, or maybe a hotel stay. But they're not as good as at least getting like $300 like cash back to you. And so that's when I started getting into it. And then for a long time, I couldn't get a credit card because I had no credit history, mm-hmm. but I would keep applying for it. Every time I would get those letters, I'd apply. And finally, I think it was um, Capital One gave me a credit card. And then now I play the game with like Paul's in Paul's name and in my name, but I do worse things in my name though, I would say. <laughs> like I apply for more in my name because if we need to apply for a loan or rent or whatever other credit stuff, it's all going through him. So I want him to have like the cleanest and highest credit score. But for me, I feel like whatever I do, so long as I'm paying my bills and whatnot, but still every time you apply for a credit card, it goes against your name. Mm-hmm. So, and it brings your score down and stuff and they can see that you keep applying for credit. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't think it affects you in your everyday life though. So I'm still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a couple credit cards that I've applied this year. Just, and ultimately I'm not saying people should go get these specific credit cards. But just to think about like, if you're going to like have a big payment, like why not apply for a new credit card? And then you're getting ultimately a discount on whatever you're paying for and saving money because a penny saved is a penny earned. And you can use that $300 or whatever that you save and maybe make that like you're going out to eat fund and say like, okay, we've got this $300 cash back. We can use that to like eat out for the next few months or date night and whatnot to um, add the little luxuries in life, right? Exactly. So, for instance, so this is one card that I applied for, which I'm going to post soon. It's called the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. So, like with that one, it was spend three thousand dollars in six months, and you get two hundred and fifty dollars cash back. Hmm. And it had zero annual fee, and then it had ninety five dollars from the first year. After that, for the first after the first year, sorry. And so I've got my cash back. And I don't want to use it anymore. And I don't want to spend $95. So I'm going to post that one very soon. <laughs> yes. So that's one. This one is one that I'm like kind of excited about is because I just bought my mom's like flight ticket to come here from this. So this was um, American, uh, uh, American Airlines Advantage card. So when we went for a missions trip uh, to Bahamas, on the airlines, they announced this card and they said, all you have to do is buy one thing on the card and you'd get 50,000 points. So wow. whether that's, you could just buy like a Snickers by a Dollar Tree and you'd get 50,000 points. Wow. Um, and then to put that, because a lot of places say like 50,000 points, 100,000 points. And then what does that really mean? But I bought my mom's one-way ticket from Australia to Phoenix with 40,000 points. And I paid 90 bucks for like processing fee and whatnot. But ultimately it was, in my opinion, it's free. I mean, you pay the 90 bucks, but that ticket would have cost $1,300. Wow. So I got that ticket for free. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, like I just applied for it just based on what they said. I was like, well, if they reject me, then so be it. But if I get those points, like, okay, why not? Let's see what I could get with those points. And when I saw that I could get it for just 40,000 points, I was like, why don't you apply for this? Because even if you um, 
don't have a mom coming from Australia, you can buy two tickets to go locally anywhere, like a husband and a wife. They can fly to maybe Florida or something and have return tickets. And I mean, this one as well has like the first year annual fee um, waived. And so I will close this after a year, but it was worth it for that. And if you do plan to travel as well, this is another thing, like sometimes applying for these credit cards before you travel, because they give you free bags. And I know you have like a hack in which you take no bags. I do, I do. <laughs> but I can't with like diapers and formula and all the baby stuff and swimming stuff. I'm like, no, I need bags. Yeah. And they charge you like a lot for that stuff. 120. So yeah, I just did, I did front, uh, frontier for <laughs> Florida and I found round trip tickets, uh, 622 for seven of us. Oh, wow. So less, it was $84, I think a piece and I purchased no extras. So yes, we're not they- picking our seats. We're not buying bags and they have a bag off Amazon. I can also link that, that you can fit a lot in. Right. That fit the dimensions because it has to be like a certain, it can be like long, but short. So it's kind of like a shorter bag, but it's pretty long. Um, and then backpacks for the babies. I think we'll be able to fit everything in there, but I'm going to try to do a video and just see, hopefully it's yeah. okay. It's frontier. I've flown them before and I've yes. only had good experiences. So yeah, I've seen some pretty <laughs> bad videos of things that happen on those flights, but yeah, let's go with I think, not ours. <laughs> yeah, different people have like different experiences. They lost our bag when we came back from Bahamas. Oh no. And they didn't even know where it was. And then it ended up in like Pennsylvania, I think. Okay. <laughs> so, but no, it wasn't bad flying, but it was just, that was a hassle though. They don't have any customer service. So you can't actually yeah. call anybody. So that was the annoying part. So you lost your bag, okay, but when you can't speak to anybody and you're trying to get some right. things, it's hard. Yeah, exactly. But no, those are good. Those are some great hacks. And yeah, we when we first started into the credit card thing, we did not um, take into account the annual fee. So definitely be sure to check that. You right. Know, when and you're doing it. And I mean, a couple of things that they say, like if your credit card has no annual fee, don't close it. Just keep it because you want to keep that credit history for a long time. And I've also heard that you should add your children as an authorized user. So now your child has a credit history. too. Oh, I never thought about that. Oh, and I mean, of course, if you have good credit, not if you have bad credit. Right, exactly. So then they can can ride your coattail. So I've added um, Sashana. I haven't added like any of the other kids, but then I'm thinking when they get married, they're just starting off their careers. They have like no credit history, but then they're trying to rent an apartment if they're trying to get married and stuff like that. So so then, yeah, I always keep like a zero annual fee credit card open, but everything else for me at this stage, I think if you're a person that travels a lot and gets their bang for your buck from them, then go for it. But we don't get that value. That's, you know, $99 from it. Cause we don't travel. Right. But one more credit card. I'll just, I got a few here, but I'll say one more is this credit card. It's called the built MasterCard, And this is a credit card that allows you to pay rent. Really? Yeah. So when we were going to rent, this was the first time my husband and I had rented. And I like renting is one of those things where it's just like ticks me off because I'm like, oh, we're paying for other people's fun and luxury. (laughs) So I just like Googled like credit cards or getting rewards for renting. And so this credit card allows you to pay like through credit um, for rent. And then you get a point for every dollar that you spend on rent which can be transferred to American Airlines, which then can fly a mom oh, from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what's and if you're renting privately, like sometimes some people just rent privately, it will cut a check for you to send to that person. So, so if you're cool. so if you're renting from mom and you, you know, just transfer through Zelle or whatever, you can just cut a check and mail it to them. And then you get a point for every dollar spent. The only thing is because they didn't want people to just use it for rent. They require you to buy five other things on there. I guess they just want you to make it like your everyday credit card. Right. But I mean, for us, like our rent is like $2,000. So in one year, that's 24,000 points. Yeah. So even though you could say 24 points can't get you much, it's still getting you something that you wouldn't have normally got. (laughs) Right. And if you have to pay that bill anyways. Yes, exactly. And you're not paying any fees because you're using the card and all that. So if you're paying 2000 every month, you're paying it irregard- like, irregardless of, you know, how you're paying for it. Then for me, I think like, why not like get these extra points for it? And you can, even if we went to Tucson for a hotel stay, we could get the hotel for free. Yeah. So. And that'd be a nice little getaway. Something right. that you're not, like you said, if it's a bill you already have to pay, then 
might as well. Yeah. Okay. So then we kind of touched on coupons, but I want to go to just, those are the main things I wanted to talk about the practical ways to save money. Cause I think those are all great. I want to totally do the mystery shopping. Now, Sarah did ask, do they pay for your order in addition to the payment amount that's listed? Or does that, is that like the full, the payment amount that was listed on the mystery shopper? Is that like the full, they just, are they basically just reimbursing you for your meal? Yeah. They're okay. just reimbursing you for your meal. Some okay. of them would have like some restaurants will have like a $10 fee. So they give you an extra 10 bucks for doing it Okay, and stuff like that. But a lot of them just pay you back for the food that you ordered. So then if you're under budget, if you're under budget too, then they just pay you back what you spent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's, I mean, you're still getting your food paid for. So that's good. But then um, other ways to save money from home and we're kind of, we'll go over this kind of, um, we're taking a long time. That's okay. We can go a little (laughs) longer tonight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so focus groups or online surveys. I did sign up for one of these and I still get, it's like interfluence or something. Okay. I still get emails from them, but I've never really, I've never done it. I just right now at this stage of my life, my main way of making money is by my piano lessons. That's my yes. side income. So, um, I don't have time for a lot of the extra stuff. Now, when I had younger kids, this could be done during nap time. Yes. You know, different, different things like that. But have you ever been part of focus groups or online surveys? Yes. So like, like you said, there's been like seasons where like, I'll get the emails and I won't even like start answering them. Right. So I did one like probably a week and a half ago. It was on a Saturday and it was where they watched Anjali. So Anjali's like the youngest, she's like 18 months and they put like poise in front of them and then they see like how they interact and mimic like what you're doing so like the lady was like he's a hairbrush like brush your hair and then she was doing the same thing and then they put little like um cartoons on and but it was their own like not a like tv show cartoon but just watching like their eyes like how their eyes move with like the pictures on there and the sounds and so that took about like 45 minutes where she did that. And that was $125 in a visa. Wow. That's really so, cool. So that was one. There was another one I was supposed to go for last Monday, but I got the daylight savings time wrong and I couldn't go anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it was at 215. I thought it was at 315. So Paul was going to come home like a little bit early so I could go. But that was uh, at Whataburger. And I think they're bringing out like new menu items and for you to like taste test and whatnot and I don't know give your feedback because they don't completely tell you exactly what it is they tell you like roughly what you're going to do and so that was going to pay 125 too for um, wow. one hour so so I'm now I'm in a season where I fill it out because I'm like okay my husband's in a place where he can help to watch the kids if I have to go so long as it's right. like in a reasonable time slot and he's not skipping work and I've done ones for diapers where they give you like a, all brands of diapers and then you had to um, write down stuff like, did the tabs tear? Did it leak? Did it, you know, rip? Stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, just put that all like through an online system and they've paid out for that. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've done like a few and that's a good little way to earn like little pocket money for fun. What is that one called or what do you go through to do that? Okay. So for us, it's called Sago, S-A-G-O is one oh, company. Okay. And another one is called Fieldwork Phoenix. (laughs) So they're very Phoenix based. But like with all of this, even if you like YouTube it or Google it and look for focus groups in your city, I'm sure you find like ones that do the same kind of stuff there because they're trying to get as diversified a group as possible. Right. I often wonder too, I wonder if a lot of these are specific to to the area that you live in. So like if you live in a bigger town like you do, you Mm -hmm. have more opportunities where I'm small and rural. So I might not have the same opportunities, you know, afforded to me. So with the one with your daughter, did she actually come to the house or was it all online? Uh, That one was out of like the office. Oh, you went to the office. So you took your daughter to the office. Okay. But I've done once online too. Those ones, like they were talking about cough syrups, like different cough syrups that you use. And it was all through Zoom. And there was five other people um there um in the zoom chat there was one that was like a big like panel that I've done and I think that one was about like baby um like something to do with like a voice activated thing for the crib 
like where you could talk into like right. you could record your voice and then you can tell your baby like mama's here like sleep tight or something like that <laughs> but so that was a big panel of like a lot of moms and so there's been like one-on-one there's been big groups there's been like online ones and um yeah so this is a variety I think if you just put your name in you can always say like okay I can't come for it but at least if you try you can see where it goes yeah and then that 125 dollar visa card that can cover you know, toiletries or stuff right. in the house, anything really. So yeah. that's really cool. Okay. So have you ever done any raw milk co-ops or farm meat gone in with people on meat, different things like that? Okay. So with the raw milk, so when we moved, I knew like our budget was going to be tight and yeah. we're probably not going to, we spend like hundred dollars in raw milk a month. Wow. And I mean, raw milk is probably expensive for us too. I think I've heard other states it's like cheaper, but it's $12 a gallon for us. Yeah. I only pay seven. Oh, there we go. $7 <laughs> so, a gallon for my raw milk. Mm-hmm. So we spend a lot and I didn't want to like start being like, okay, we're going to stop buying this and stuff. Let me see whether there's ways that I can still make our budget go far. So I remember like I contacted the guy, um, the supplier, the farm, the farmer, and I asked him, do you think you could add this house to your stock? Because I see like there's no one else in this area. Hmm. So by doing that, like, and we were able to work that out because there was no one already doing it here, then I get discounts for hosting. Nice. And um, depending on how much people order. So for every 10 gallons, you get a gallon free. And then a farm joined with them where they supply meat too. And I get um, $15 for every time he supplies meat because I provide the fridge and then a percentage of the sale of the meat too. So depending on how much they're selling. Um, So that's been like really good because there was a time I went to log in and all my milk was free because they had like 40 or $50 credit in there because of all the meat. So that's really cool. Yeah. And I mean, I haven't gone and got a cow or myself but I've gone in like Mrs. Anderson has organized before like a whole cow and whatnot and we've bought like meat from her mm-hmm. but I've never done it myself and organized that I always yeah, thought yeah. it was really hard to like split up like the pieces <laughs> yeah I've, I've done it um and we, that's kind of what we do we the with the ladies in church that I've done it with um usually you buy the cow from mm-hmm. the farmer and then you also have the butcher fee you know, that you have to yeah. cover as well to the butcher shop. So, and we'll, you know, do all that. And so we will, we'll get together and we'll be like, we only have one brisket this time. Who wants the brisket? So you take mm-hmm. the brisket this time. I'll take it next time, you yeah. know, and I'll hear, I'll give you a couple extra steaks to cover the brisket, you know, yeah. and we'll do stuff like that. So you just, you do have to do it with people you get along with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess it could turn into a fight, <laughs> but then I'm like, I need more ground beef because ground beef roasts and steaks oh. are what I primarily want. That's okay. like the cut of meat that I want because roasts in the, in the store are so expensive. So then even though overall you're paying a certain amount, like, you know, $3 a, a pound or something that might be too low, but whatever it is, but then that counts towards the steaks too. So, yes. you know, you'll have ribeyes that normally would be 30 bucks in the store, right. but yeah. it had come out to the three or $4 a pound or whatever it is. So it does pay off in the long run. And I, I definitely, I haven't ordered one in a while. I need to get with the other ladies in our church. Because yeah, you're saying like yeah. $3 a pound. I was looking at it this week and I think it comes up to like $9 a pound. Oh, us. it's not it's, that much here. Yeah. Our cows no. have to struggle to get fat here. <laughs> uh, that's probably why I live in yeah. um, rural country where it's farms and green grass. Yes. And I have a hair blowing in my eye. It's driving me nuts. So I have... um. Yeah. It's farmland here. So it's, but no, it's, it's probably, it might be more than that. It might be four or $5 a pound, but it's not nine. Yeah. It's way lower than that. (laughs) Yeah. That is really high. So it might not pay off for you guys, but if you know, it still pays off because I still think so compared to like the beef in the soup. I mean, obviously you're paying a little bit more, but for me, it's worth like that little bit more than you think because beef in the supermarket's not cheap. No, it's not. Sarah's in the, Sarah, if you're listening, you'll have to tell me she keeps all the figures of how much okay. it is per pound. And then, um, but I do know hogs, it's way cheaper. Um, mm-hmm. Hogs are not that expensive here in Illinois. And so if you want all the cuts of bacon and pork chops and things like that, that's a good thing to go in with other people. Oh, yeah. But I know for us, we rely. Okay. Yeah. She said ours was just over $4 a pound. 
maybe we need to travel there and get like our trunk <laughs> travel cooler. here <laughs> yes get two coolers you can take fly here because it's 20 you really 24 24 hours for me it's far so you can fly <laughs> here and then buy a couple coolers and pack a full with me and drive back it might be right. worth it <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll see which credit card I can get points on yeah. so like <laughs> <laughs> see what ones you can so yeah it's right. really I knew it was not that expensive nine dollars a pound man See, I just think overall where you live, you live in a city. I live in rural country. You have to look at the demographics. Like things are going to cost less, you know, in my yeah. area, things are going to cost more in your area, but you have access to more things than I do. Yes. You know, so there's like the food banks and that kind of yeah. stuff that you can cut cost on. Yeah. Right. So there's okay. obviously pros and cons to whatever you look yeah. at, but um, we got onto a budget back when, and I know there's like mixed reviews about Dave Ramsey or whatever, but he really helped our family because we were in debt and we went along and we read his book and we did the snowball thing where you start paying off your little debts, you know, up to your bigger debts. And we went to the cash system. So basically you have envelopes, you put the cash in. So like, um, my clothing fund, my for fun mm -hmm. fund, you know, we want to go see a movie. So let's put the cash in there for that. And then, you know, once the cash is gone, you don't get to see a movie if there's no right. cash in that envelope in the entertainment envelope or whatever. So um, that really helped us get on. And we we had a credit card at the time, but we froze it in a block of ice. So we okay. would still yeah. have it. <laughs> we would still have it if like we had this horrible emergency. And that was the first yeah. thing too. We built up an emergency savings fund. So that's yes. $500 at first. We got the $500 in there. And then if an emergency came up, we would use that if something was over that we had the credit card, but we had to really think about it before mm -hmm. we used it. Cause you have to thaw it out and yeah, <laughs> you know, really think about it before you use that. Do you guys, are you on a written budget where you can see it? Um, I guess maybe getting married older, we were not on any cash system. It's all uh -huh. like credit. And I mean, we, I mean, thank God we haven't had to deal with any, like paying off any debt and whatnot since we've been married. And, but I use mint like the online um, budgeting system. It's free. Oh, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So Mint is an online system and you can link all like your credit cards. You can link your bills, everything. And then um, it just like you create the budget as in like how much you want to spend in each category. And then if you have like your checking account where all your friends, um, your income goes to and all your credit card, it automatically categorizes it for you. So they know, for instance, if you go to Ross, that's shopping. So like that, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So then every week, because I do a budget every Friday, I just go and double check stuff. So like, for instance, when we pay you like for the piano classes, like that always categorizes wrong because it's through Zelle. They don't know like right. where that's going to go. So I'll put it into tuition and stuff like that. So then you put that all in into, there's one page where you can do all that. And then there's a separate page where you can see like how in the red you are or green and whatnot. So it like goes into like charts, like graphs and whatnot for you. And then you can see like, okay, I spent, you know, let's say your grocery fund was a thousand dollars for the month. Okay. And then you can see like, okay, it's only like two weeks in and I've already spent 800 bucks. So we need to try to eat out of the pantry more, you know, like, right. And we've definitely done that because we've gone, like you go to Costco and then Costco right away is $500. <laughs> yeah. So now you have $200 more than like for us, it's 700 for the month is like what our groceries are kind of like. And so then you're like trying to make that $200 spread out for the whole week. Cause I mean, you get a lot of stuff from Costco where you don't get everything from Costco. <laughs> Right. So that's a good way that has helped us. And I have kind of said like, okay, well, we're going to have to eat the meat we have, eat the like bib, like the shopping is only for veggies right now, snacks. I mean, like we make our own bread. And so like we cut costs on like sandwiches by that way, by like using our own bread and whatnot. So yeah, budgeting with the mint has really helped me like track everything. And because I, and now I spend less time doing it because it does it all for me. Because before I'd have right. to like, go into each bank account and you know move it all around and put this in this little tab on like like I used to use like excel spreadsheets to do everything wow. <laughs> so but some people I know don't like that because they're like oh you're putting it all up there and everybody can see like big brothers watching and they don't want it all connected so um I, get I gave that, up but, on that a long time ago the yeah. government knows everything about me whatever right <laughs> so for me it's really helped like to see where we are and that's something and then you can shift your budget around and you go like okay 
like for us, like in summer, like the electricity bill is really high. So now you have you have an expense that you're putting for that month for that. But now I can bring it down and go like, okay, I can reduce that by a couple hundred because it's getting cooler. And I can put that maybe through shopping or like Christmas fun, like get that going or something. Like so you can tweak it and move it around and it's super easy and user friendly. That's really cool. Yeah. Sarah said the Dave Ramsey's budget app is like this, the paid version. You can connect your bank account in a similar way, but she just manually enters stuff. We've always (laughs) used Quicken. Mm -hmm. Um, That's my husband does the budget. Now we've gone through different seasons in our life where I did, I solely did the budget and I kept track of everything. But then when we've gone through drier seasons where, um, we're struggling a little bit financially, maybe due to pay cuts or whatever, I can't have that on my shoulders. So he takes over the whole thing and then he can figure out how we're going to meet this bill and how we're going to meet this bill. And I just, there's, and that's the season we're at now. I primarily, um, keep track of my piano lesson money in a separate account. He does all of the main account stuff, you know? So like both of our names are on that, but it just helps keep them separate because at first I had all my piano lesson money going into the main account. And then he was always confused. Like, is this from you? You know, is this for a bill or is this just extra or whatever? So it works best for us. So right now it's all on his shoulders. (laughs) So I primarily, I know what my set budget is for my groceries, which is 300 a week. I usually go over. So what I do, if I go over, I spend the 300 through our mutual account and then I spend the rest through my account. So I cover whatever extra I go over the written budget. Basically Mm -hmm. how I do it. And I think the key is just finding works what works for your family. Maybe you're yeah. better at numbers than your husband yeah. and he wants you to do it. You know, maybe yeah. you don't want the pressure of it. Just whatever works for your family. I, I honestly enjoy it. <laughs> uh-huh. And I didn't I mean, mind it. So I didn't mind it when I did it. It just got to the point where I was stressing out too much about how are we going to get this bill paid? And you know what? Guess what? We always got our bills paid. We've never yes. been in a bill. We've always got has always come through and he's always provided, but it gets a little scary sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like yes. we've raising, had those moments too. <laughs> yes. Raising a family is expensive, especially on a, you know, um, one income, one main income. So I definitely think you need to be on the same page as your husband because money problems are one of the biggest hurdles in marriages to overcome that I've seen. Yes. So, and then, um, but let me, Let's go ahead, go to, um, I want to just talk because we're going to wrap this up in the next few minutes, but stay at mom, stay at home mom opportunities. Cause I know a lot of women struggle with, maybe they were working before they got married and then it, it is, it's a complete shift and it, you have to almost shift your thinking because you have another person to think about now when the kids start coming, you've got these kids to think about. Um, I think one of the most important things that's helped me through life is just recognizing the season that you're, you know, and just doing living life accordingly to that. (laughs) Yeah. And your life might even change more as your kids get older and Sashana starts being the babysitter and you're able to leave and go on a date. But I think you have such a good foundation for what you're doing already that you're going to be able to even experience fun things, even as your kids get older. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, that's definitely true. And for sure it was hard, <laughs> I would say for the first few years and you have that woe is me attitude. And, mm. and like I said, because I think that's one of the bad things about getting married older is that you come in with this, like all this experience of like earning your own money, doing whatever you felt like. And, and especially because I grew up in a Christian home, then there was also like, not that, um, what you could say like that burden maybe of like oh I did all these bad things so I shouldn't feel sad about my history I was like yeah I was still like a saved Christian like just going out with people from youth group you know that kind of stuff right so um yeah definitely realizing like like you're building a foundation right now and it's still like you get moments like that still sometimes where you're like oh be nice when you hear other people right like well they get to go on dates because their mom lives here and stuff like that you know right so, um, yeah, definitely. And that I think as well with trying to get a side hustle too, sometimes you have to think like, cause I would see now ladies with like older kids and they start to do stuff and you realize, well, I honestly can't be able, like fit both of that in. 
like no. to contribute like the right amount of hours needed to establish that be successful or make money in that and raise my kids and be happy because then they're going to start getting like just like when you're on your phone sometimes and you get annoyed with your kids because they're calling your name yeah and so then if you're going to be working on this business on the side like the priorities of like running the home is naturally going to like in a bad way start you know getting on you because like oh if only I didn't have to do the laundry I could work on this and stuff like that so no and it's definitely a shift and I I try to encourage young moms all the time I'm 42. I'm almost 43 years old. I have almost four adults now. I've got almost, you know, I've got my three older ones or adults. I kind of categorize my kids as like adults, then middle schoolers and babies. That's like how in my mind I categorize them. But because I've raised Chloe will be 17 this coming May. So, and then Abby will be 19 in November. So since almost half of my kids are in those adult years, my my home life looks very different from yours where you Mm -hmm. are in the midst of raising littles. I did not start anything with my piano teaching as far as like, um, putting in a lot of hours. I used to work like one afternoon, I'd bring the kids to the church and I would do piano lessons for the school kids there. Um, that was kind of hit and miss though. I didn't actually get a job as a piano instructor at the local arts Academy until my oldest was almost 13. So okay. 13 years, I was not really bringing in, you know, any side income at all. I just, I, I had a work, I had an outlet. I worked out at curves. That was like my main outlet. I had a blog I wrote after the kids were in bed, you know, yeah. but as far as what I do now, cause now I teach 15 to 20 hours a week of piano while the kids are working on their schooling, but I can only do that because Abigail is, I pay her to help with yeah. the babies you know, the other three are doing school, but I pay her to, to help out with the baby. So she's also making income, you know, while she's doing that, but that looks completely different. So I don't want young moms to ever get this thing. Like I can have all these little kids. I can have my cake and eat it too. You know, like I should be able to do what Cassandra does. No, you're not because it's a lot like almost over a decade (laughs) of being married and having kids until you're able to do that. So yeah, just don't rush it, you know, spend the time with your little kids, spend the time with your little kids doing, you know, raising them. It's going to pay right. off when they're older. It's going to yeah. pay off. And I also think like your desires change. Like, I think if I got a side hustle when I was first married, it'd be from like silly reasons. Whereas mm-hmm. now, like I can already feel like what I want to do with it would be different. And then think about like, even like when your kids are older and now you can do stuff with your kids once again, like your desires are going to be different. So maybe God is using this season to like change your heart and like make you have better interest. Right. And Sarah said, you know, it's, and I'm not ripping against anyone that has a side, like she has a little, they do, um, their herbal things that they do her Mm -hmm. and Nicole, but it's about a hobby. It's a hobby for her. You know, she's not seriously pouring all these hours every week, you know, 15 hours a week, 20 hours a week, whatever. Yeah. I'm not ripping against women that have that. I'm just, I'm cautioning younger women against getting this fatalist mentality or this victim mentality. Yeah. You know, I can't do anything because of all my kids. I didn't do anything either for almost 13 years. <laughs> yeah. So besides raising those kids and it, it pays off, you know, it pays off. And I'm also not down on women. I want to throw this out there too. Um, you know, my daughter-in-law right now, she's a phlebotomist and they don't have kids yet. You know, they're just yeah. married. And there's, there's really no reason for her to quit her job right now because yeah. you know she loves what she does and he's gone working as well the whole day. But her mindset is this is a season right now, but when we start yeah. having kids, she wants to be home with them. She wants to homeschool them. You right. Know? So that's her mindset. She's got a good mindset with that. So, yeah. So as long as you have your priorities straight and if I didn't have to move, maybe I would have continued like working the office job I did, but I had to quit it. So yeah. Yeah. The li- just a little bit moving across seas, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but let's just do real quick. I wanted to mention some things that as you get older kids, there are opportunities, online tutoring, um, online lessons for something you're proficient in. I have told my parents often the best thing that they did for me when I was younger was all the years and years and thousands of dollars they poured into music lessons for me, because right. now I can take that and teach others 
um, when it comes to that. So I, I'm so thankful that they did that crafting and selling it. This is not something I would do, but I know there's like many <laughs> ladies it. like the, uh, Jeff Usler's wife. I think she's done a very good job with all her crochet. Oh yes. I've seen that. Yes. You know, and different things, um, baking. I know there's a lot of women we know that have side things with baking. You know, yes. I love to bake. I don't think I would ever sell it. But I did want to mention the clothing swaps really quickly. There's a lady in our church. She will, yes. we, have, we have like free sales. Um, it's basically a place around here that does give away clothing. Um, there's Goodwill $1 stores, um, mm -hmm. $1 days where you get the clothing for, she will find name brand Calvin Klein. I don't know if that's still name brand. I don't even know what the name brand is, <laughs> but she knows and she'll find them and she'll resell them on eBay. Yes. Yeah, there's a lady in our church that does that too, where she just goes into Goodwill. And I, I think it's a hobby. She loves doing it. And she finds like churches. I think she's even found like a Berkey water filter new in box. Wow. And so wow. That. <laughs> so mm -hmm. she's found really good things and made good money off like reselling them. Yeah. So that's something that you could do. Someone told me about it. They actually make thousands a year doing it. And I tried like one time. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I like <laughs> went in and I found these name brand clothes. And then it sat in a bag in my closet for months. Yeah. And, so, and I forgot about it. And then I found it one day. I'm like, this is not for me. <laughs> you have yeah. to take pictures and list it. Then you have to ship them. Uh, I've sold some things on Mercari and done okay with that. I'm like, I was buying, I went through a phase where I was buying dot, dot smile dresses for my girls. So okay. I'm like, I'm going to sell my ma old maternity stuff on Mercari. And then the money I get from that, I'm just going to turn around and put it on dot, dot smile dresses, you know, for the girls. So I've done things like that, but I also really, I think if you're going to find a side hustle and this season, you really have to like love it because you're not going to have that yeah. much time to invest into it. Yeah. And I can't craft. I'm not, I've told you I'm not creative. So I don't me do all those things. Either. And that's why for me, like numbers and all this kind of stuff, like trying to get like the luxuries while just living everyday life, that works for me. And so that's why I got into this and I get excited. Like when I'm like, oh, this new credit card or this new place popped up for like secret shopping. For me, that's like, okay, that's my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. no. And I've never heard of that stuff and I love it. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try the secret shopper thing. Yeah. Re I really want to do that. But there is a freedom that comes from living frugally. And yeah. you said you didn't have a lot of debt to pay off, which is awesome. And I believe a lot of women, we do kind of get like a high for me. It's like, Ooh, I found this great deal at the thrift store, you know? And a lot of women will have buyer's remorse then, right? you know, after spending a whole bunch of money. And then even for us, we've saved up before for different things in our life. And then you can enjoy the things that you purchase. Or if you go on a vacation, you can enjoy buying yes. Christmas presents with money you have saved. Yes. You absolutely know. and not have to think like oh we're going to be and then taxes come and then you realize okay all my taxes are gone as soon as it hits yes. like the bank because i have to pay all this stuff off yeah so it definitely is nice i mean yeah we've been blessed like we didn't have to start our life with like debt i mean because maybe because we started life later as well and dealt with that but for sure like i mean we bought like our vehicles with cash like nice. and not you know got them on payments i mean everybody does things different but for my husband like that's his like he cannot like pay a big number on a use on a vehicle right him. but it's nice to know then when stuff breaks down all you're dealing with is like the breakdown of the car and like not like okay I've got a payment on top of this too and exactly. stuff and and then yeah you can always just get rid of stuff if you <laughs> if yeah. you don't want it so and and as well like when you keep like everything tight like it's easier to also control maybe like where you put your money and not okay mm -hmm bring down the luxuries, eat like, you know, meatless meals these days. Every, every family has their standards that they want for their life. Like what keeps them happy. And so yeah. just live within. <laughs> yep. Live within your means. And then, you know, I think one thing for us, if you are in a Baptist church, you know, anywhere and you want to, you're serving in the ministry or you're serving in your local church. One thing that's very important to us is from the day we got married, we've always tithed 10% of our gross. Yeah you know, 10% of our, of what before taxes, you know, all of that, we've already always given 10% first. So even if we had whole oh, things are going to be tight this month, you know, things are gonna be tight this week. We've given that and we've just seen the Lord bless, you know, yeah. through that. So, um, I, that's been very important to us. And when you keep your debt low, you're going to have more of an ability 
to give to the church or to give to the yes. work of the Lord or to go on the missions trip, you know, to yep. be able to afford it or to you have a guest speaker come and you, you know, give him a love offering or you have a missionary come and you give them, you just slip them an extra hundred bucks, you know, for something for them yep. and their family. You know, there's all these little things that you can do above and beyond if you don't have a lot of debt. Right. And I think that's just like life in general. Like if you have everything like systematic, the more systematic it is, the more freedom you have. Like if you, your day is more systematic, then if somebody tells you like, Hey, let's go to the park, you know, like, well, I already like have school done all this kind of stuff. Like, and I know it's going to take me X amount of time to make dinner. So let's go. I can come for a couple hours. So it's the same way with your budget too. I think if you have everything like lined up, then if something comes up where then someone like, you know, you have a GoFundMe come up and someone needs money for like medical expenses, you can be like, we can easily cut off our whole coffee fund for this month so we can give that person like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So I, I definitely think like the more rules you have, the more freedom you have. Yes, I think so too. And, you know, people look at my upbringing sometimes they're like, how did you do it living under rules? But I feel like I have so much freedom in my marriage, you know, cause we yeah. both, we both came into our marriage with zero baggage, you know, yeah. and, um, zero regrets. And then we were able to just, I don't know, it, it's just made marriage kind of, dare I say a little bit easier for us, I think, <laughs> than most people because of that. So, and overall, when you have rules and boundaries in place, when it comes to anything, self-control, when yes. it comes to anything, then it's going to pay off in every area of your life. Yeah. So, including financially. And then just lastly, it's fun to get the freebies. I'm like all yes. pissed up. I want to go like apply to everything. And <laughs> yeah, no, I, I still get it now. Like I'd send pictures because I'd try like that ecstasy play. It's like, I'll send pictures to Paul and I'd be like free, free. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And he's probably like, if, if he's anything like my husband, he's probably like, okay, honey. But secretly he's like, my wife's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because yesterday he was telling me like on the drive home, he was saying like credit card debt in America is like off the charts. Like it's never been like as bad as it is now. And I was like, well, aren't you happy with me managing your funds? And he says like, yeah, like all the time I think about how like you do such a good job. So yeah, I think they, and they like that they find that we find like nifty ways to enjoy. It's not just like, you're only eating spaghetti and that's it for dinner. Like Rice we're room. eating and right, we're having fun while doing it too. So yeah, that's really awesome. Well, I hope ladies, we had a good turnout. Um, sometimes I feel like the seven o'clock show works better because, uh, we had a lot of viewers tonight. So thank mm -hmm. you for viewing. Thank you for coming on. No, you got me you. like all these <laughs> ideas. Now I'm going to go and do all these ideas. If you guys have any questions, definitely leave them for her in the comments. And then I'm going to try to get those websites from you. And we're going to put them in the comments too. Okay. So it'll be easy for everyone to find them. But anyways, I hope you all have a great week and it's already dark here. We're, we're getting mm -hmm. into the time of year when it's, it's starting to get dark early. So by seven 30, it was dark. Ugh. Not my favorite time of year, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you all have a good week. Hang on, Mel. I'm going to say goodbye to them and then okay. talk to you a second. So we'll see you all next week.